Hello, 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 Facebook. I am Dr. Myla Bennett of Adair Bella Plastic Surgery and Medical Spa in Johns Creek, Georgia. And um, tonight, I this is going to be a short one because I'm actually not feeling that great. But it was something that um, I saw earlier. Someone post and it, hey, Aisha, and it freaked me out for people. And I've talked about this before. I've actually done a... Um, a live months ago about this topic um, but liposuction the person said she was asking about um, if liposuction was painful she was considering getting some liposuction and then she said she was reconsidering because of comments she's seen people make about lipo but she's like I don't understand because it's not real surgery and I'm like oh god liposuction is for sure real surgery so I wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit and help people get clear on um, what liposuction is and um, it's a great it's a great op it's a great procedure I do it all the time but it can be really dangerous if you think that it's not real surgery hi everybody hi hello hello, hello. I see all these people saying hello let's see hello Jacqueline hi Autumn hi Tommy Georgia, Tiffany, Cherie, Shamika, Chrissy, Tabitha, Amanda. Hello, hello, hello. So, um, liposuction is one of the most uh, popular procedures we do in plastic surgery. Um, and it's one of the most popular procedures that fake plastic surgeons do. Um... It is, I think the reason why people kind of downplay it is because the incisions are really small and because a lot of people do liposuction without you actually being put to sleep. So um, I think that makes people underestimate like the how serious liposuction is. All surgery is serious. Liposuction is most certainly surgery. Um, the small incisions throw people off and... What I try to help people understand is when a when the doctor is operating through incisions that are that small, where you actually the doc, the doctor is operating blindly, which means that they need to be more skilled and more experienced in the anatomy because they can't see what they're doing. Uh, liposuction is a procedure that's done by feel. You know, obviously my eyes are open and I'm looking. But you can't see underneath the skin. I can't see through the, through the skin. I don't have x-ray vision. So we're moving by feel. Like the whole time I'm pinching and I'm using using my hand to feel where the cannula is underneath. Um, and so it's it's you have to have a thorough knowledge of the anatomy and respect for the anatomy to keep from hurting people. People die from liposuction. It is not. It's. It's not, well, I won't say it's not uncommon. It's not like people are just dying every single day. Um, but liposuction is one of the procedures that people, when they have complications, it's like organ injuries and um, and stuff like that. Because if the person doesn't really understand the anatomy um, and that cannula is being held in the wrong, in the, the wrong way and pointed in the wrong direction, you can go through layers that you weren't planning to go through. And all of a sudden have a lipo cannula in your liver and that will kill you. And people die that way from liposuction. And oftentimes when the deaths are from things like that, it's at the hands of a person who's not actually a surgeon. <laughs> because it is uh, possible to get people adequately numbed while they're wide awake to do liposuction. Um, then there's a lot of doctors who don't have to be able to get time in the operating room or be able to book a surgery at a hospital, they don't have to be able to do that in order to do it. So what a lot of people don't know is that tumescent anesthesia, which is used for liposuction, even if you're put to sleep, we still do tumescence because it cuts down on bleeding. And so it makes it so that the person loses less blood during the procedure. So it's uniformly done when you get liposuction. Well, that was, that was kind of spearheaded by a dermatologist that's not even that's not a surgeon um and those that was done because they wanted to be able to 
get people adequately anesthetized in the office setting. And it also, like I said, reduces the amount of blood loss. So don't be confused. So think about it. Like I've said before, if I have a person, if I'm going to have a non-surgeon operating on me, I want them to cut me open so they can see everything. If you're operating through an incision this little on a field that's this big and the incisions is small, I need you to be able to see what's going on so you can avoid the things that you don't want to hurt. And if you're thinking that liposuction isn't surgery, you're not even, you won't think that way and you'll end up in the hands of a person who can hurt you. It happens way too often. I've seen too many newspaper articles about people who died and the cause of cause of death was liver laceration, you know, perforated bowel, um, splenic laceration where they got into their spleen or they pierced through somebody's diaphragm because they didn't understand what was going on. Um, and that's, that's generally when those types of things happen, it's at the hands of a non-surgeon and a patient thinking, oh, it's just a little lipo. So I can just go anywhere. Don't, that's not true. It's surgery. It's full blown surgery through tiny incisions. So that means the person needs to be, um, skilled and with a complete thorough understanding of the anatomy and, um, without being able to see it, they need to understand the anatomy. And unfortunately, people who don't go through a surgical training, hi, Valerie, people who don't go through a surgical training, they don't really see the anatomy on a regular basis because the skin is covering it. And if you're not in surgery, you don't see the stuff under the skin. So that's something to think about. So, yes, liposuction is surgery. Um, I Liposuction is fine as long as the person is a plastic surgeon. Um it being done at a teaching hospital, if you're talking about, are you speaking about like resident cosmetic clinics and stuff like that? Um, Jillian Banks, yes, I do skin removal. Um, because in teaching hospitals have plastic surgeons who do cosmetic surgery. I think what's important is that first, the person you're considering is a board certified plastic surgeon. And then once you know that they're in the lit, on the, they're a board certified plastic surgeon, then the next thing you want to look at is whether or not they actually practice cosmetic plastic surgery. Um, if they don't do a lot of cosmetic plastic surgery, then you might not want to get them to do uh, your cosmetic plastic surgery. You want the per- you want someone who actually does cosmetic plastic surgery. But first and foremost, they should be a plastic surgeon, and then you need to investigate whether or not they actually practice cosmetic plastic surgery. Um, I, so when I was in my fellowship training, which I did a fellowship after my residency was completed, I did a fellowship in aesthetics, which is cosmetic plastic surgery. And we had a resident cosmetic clinic. And then I had a um, fellow clinic, like my aesthetic fellow clinic. And so people got those procedures at a reduced cost, but there was a board certified plastic surgeon who specialized in cosmetic surgery, overseeing everything that we did. So people were able to get um, cosmetic procedures at a reduced cost from residents under the guidance of a cosmetic plastic surgeon. So I don't think that is um, an unreasonable thing to um, consider if you're trying to cut costs because you will be overseen, at least in my program, we were overseen. The residents weren't just in the OR without a real surgeon with them. So, um, but it was an opportunity for them to learn all the, the whole process of the surgery, pre-op, intra-op, post-op, you know, and they had like the, like the safety net of a board certified plastic surgeon who specialized in cosmetic surgery to make sure they didn't mess stuff up. (laughs) Um... The belly button, a belly button revision depends on what your belly button looks like. So in plastic surgery, we learn a whole lot of tricks and you basically pull out the one necessary for whatever it is that's going on. So I can't really give you an answer to that without seeing your belly button. Um, I'll have to see it and come up with, and you know, basically you might talk to four plastic surgeons and they might have four different plans. And that doesn't mean that they're, then they all could be right. We learn a lot of different, um, techniques to modify the appearance of things, move tissues around, stuff like that. And 
oftentimes there's more than one way to do it. But it's, I can't say how I will revise your belly button without seeing it. If you just had a surgery a week ago, I probably will wait about um, 6 to 12 weeks. Probably at least 12 weeks. 6 might be a little short. Um, you need to speak with the surgeon you choose about how long um you should what you need to be um you need to not smoke before surgery. Um I'll make my patients stop six weeks before surgery. And I test them along the way. And if they come out positive, surgery's um canceled. I don't you don't want to get a tummy tuck and, and have nicotine in your system. That is just a setup for bad complications. Um, Tommy, it depends on the school. Um, I know at Ohio State, I think it was like a 60% reduction in the surgeon's fee. But it kind of levels out a little bit because the OR time takes longer in a in a resident. So even though the surgeon's fee might be less, their OR, they're going to take more time in the OR and that doesn't change. They can't reduce the price of the OR and anesthesia. And so you'll end up with a discount, but it won't quite be 60%. Because it's going to take a resident longer than it's going to take somebody who does it all the time. Um, Brandy. It depends on what the person looks like. Whether or not you can get. It depends on what kind of waistline you start off with. Whether or not you can get that or not. And it also depends on what your skin quality is like. So you have to first be a candidate for liposuction. In order to get that look from liposuction. And, you know, so it just kind of depends. That's not a one size fits all answer. Um, I had Lawrence report. I had lipo and now I have a like a permanent black line as if I may have been burned while doing the lipo. I may have to come see you. I hate it. And you see that indent my shirts. And that could also be 